Excalibur, HIMARS and others, high-precision Western weapons are no longer effective in Ukraine. A significant portion of American precision-guided munitions has proven vulnerable to interference from Russian electronic warfare systems. After a sharp drop in their effectiveness, the Ukrainian armed forces stopped using certain types of Western weapons, writes the Washington Post. As senior Ukrainian military officials told reporters, projectiles that are aimed at a target using a global positioning satellite system, GPS, are vulnerable to interference. These precision weapons performed well at the beginning of the war, but over time the Russians found countermeasures to them. Now, some weapons that were previously considered powerful tools no longer provide an advantage. I'm not saying nobody cared before, but now the Americans are starting to worry. As we share information with our partners and our partners share with us, the Russians are certainly sharing with China as well, said one senior official, Ukrainian military men. For example, the success rate of Excalibur precision projectiles, which are fired from 155mm artillery, has plummeted within a few months to less than 10%. After this, the Ukrainian armed forces were forced to abandon the use of this ammunition last year. These shells have not been supplied to Ukraine for six months now. Similar problems have arisen with precision-guided JDAM bombs, which are dropped from aircraft. Ground-launched small-diameter bombs also proved ineffective. The Americans are now working on new settings before making them available again. The M30-31 stroke high-precision missiles, which are launched by the already legendary HIMARS and M270 launchers, did not escape the sad fate. They showed themselves powerfully during the first year of the war, destroying many Russian ammunition depots and command posts. But by the second year, it was all over. The Russians deployed electronic warfare, turned off satellite signals, and HIMARS became completely ineffective. Effective. This ineffectiveness led to very expensive projectiles being increasingly used to hit lower priority targets, a senior Ukrainian military official said. In January, Ukrainian military commanders called on Western partners to provide an alternative M26 cluster munitions, which can also be launched from these multiple launch rocket systems. These low tech, unguided missiles are resistant to obstacles, and cluster sub munitions can hit targets over a wide area, even if the shot is inaccurate. It is noted that Kyiv still considers its HIMARS missiles to be effective, but Russian jammers can cause them to miss their target by 15 meters or more. When it is, for example, a pontoon bridge, but there is a 10-meter deflection, the projectile hits the water said the Ukrainian official with whom the authors of the publication spoke. Senior Ukrainian military officials said UK provided Storm Shadow air-launched cruise missiles were less vulnerable to Russian interference because they relied not only on GPS, but also on two other navigation systems, including an internal map that matches the terrain of the planned flight path. However, Russian air defense has achieved some success in intercepting them. Ukraine mobilizes more men for army, but there are not enough armored vehicles for them. After months of controversy, a new mobilization law has finally come into force in Ukraine. The law lowers the age for conscription into the army from 27 to 25 and provides penalties for draft dodgers. As stated in the Forbes article, the reforms are expected to significantly expand the army, but there is not enough heavy equipment for all these new troops. This is a problem. Just ask the Russians, who have lost more than 15,000 armored vehicles in Ukraine and are trying to replace them. No wonder more and more Russians are going into battle in open golf carts and vintage military tractors from the 1950s with thin armor, the publication writes. Demechanization of Russian mechanized units will likely lead to slower and more limited advances, which will hamper the overall advance of Russian forces, Ukrainian think tank Frontelligence Insight explained. Ukrainian forces risk the same devolution. The Ministry of Defense in Kyiv is forming 10 new brigades with a strength of 2,000 people, expanding some battalions into brigades, transferring a lightly equipped territorial brigade to the Marine Corps, and adding an artillery brigade to the National Guard. In general, the changes could increase the brigades of the Ukrainian ground forces by about 10%. The army is forming five new infantry brigades. The 156th 
the 157th, the 158th and 159th Infantry Brigades are not motorized infantry brigades, meaning they lack the tracked armored vehicles that mechanized troops use to go into battle. The shortage of heavy equipment in Ukraine is so acute that one recently formed mechanized brigade, the 153rd, was actually transferred from a mechanized unit to an infantry unit. Ukrainians are not quite ready to ride golf carts into battle. But that could change if the vehicle shortage worsens. Since Russia launched its war against Ukraine, Kyiv has received about 7,500 armored vehicles from its foreign allies and has also recovered thousands of older Soviet-era vehicles from long-term storage. These more than 10,000 vehicles joined the thousands of vehicles that were already in service at the start of the invasion. Ukraine has lost about 5,000 pieces of equipment on the battlefield and the demand for it is constantly growing as the Ukrainian armed forces have expanded. The United States is doing its part to reduce these shortages. The first three relief packages of the $61 billion in fresh funding included hundreds of M2 combat vehicles, M113 armored personnel carriers and armored trucks. But even these hundreds of vehicles are not enough. It is safe to say that the increase in the size of the Ukrainian army significantly outpaced its mechanization. The fact that most of the newest brigades are infantry is proof of this.